Another edition of Clan Financial, and it's the captain's turn up on deck. Dyson Stevenson, fresh off. Uh, we were just talking about baseball hats and how no one wears baseball hats in Glasgow. No one wears baseball hats in Dublin. And it's interesting because you've been in Dublin recently just for a little flying visit. And uh, people kind of look at you strange when you have the baseball cap on, especially backwards. Yeah, yeah, we definitely got, uh, there's five of us guys, and we definitely had a few uh, funny looks over there. Um, yeah, like I was saying before, Glasgow, you see the odd person kind of wearing a hat, but over in Dublin, uh, we definitely stood out like a sore thumb. But uh, fortunately for us, no one, uh, no one got in our face or anything about it, but uh, we were definitely noticed a little bit. They just assumed you were bald. Uh, when I wear my baseball hat out, people just assume that you've, you're you're hiding something. So they just assume that all of you had uh, had a, either a, a team ritual shaving the head or you were all bald. So people left you alone. It's great to be talking to you coming off, off a win and certainly three of a possible four points. But you and I are just talking off camera a little bit, Dice. Certainly since Christmas and maybe even beyond that, we know it's, it's not been good enough and we know that the results haven't been there. Um, is there a message from the captains of the Purple Army at this stage? Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, the games we got we got coming up here, are, you know, very important. Obviously, two two months left in the season, and and that's kind of where you know everyone's got their their special teams dialed in. Everyone's everyone's got their hopefully healthy, and and we're finally kind of getting close to one hundred percent healthy. But uh, you know, everyone's at the top of their game, and. And we have teams that are kind of, you know, it's not the Sheffields, the Belfast, it's teams that, you know, we're trying to we're trying to catch them right now. And obviously we're not looking at Sheffield right now. We're looking we're looking at the team ahead of us. And then once we pass them, we look at the next team ahead of us. So right now that's our goal is just take it step by step. But, uh, you know, obviously it wasn't good enough. And I completely agree with you. I, I watched, uh, you know, a month of it and been a part of, you know, all of it except for that little bit. And... And but we're we're starting to get back on track here. You can just tell in the room. Um, you know, some people might not believe it, but uh, I 100 percent believe in this team, and and I believe in the coaching staff and and everyone a part of it. And uh, you know, we got a new goalie, we got a new defenseman, we have some competition in the lineup now. You know, once Charlie gets back, we're going to have competition up front where guys are going to have to sit out if they're not playing well. And and that uh, that's really important. You see that teams like Sheffield and Belfast, they always have that. So if you know if there's a guy they don't like, or or if there's a guy that uh, isn't playing well, he's not going to play. So, and and I believe in every player on our team that they work hard and they're good players. But uh, now that we have a little competition, it's it's everyone's going to have to ramp it up a little bit extra. Well, let's let's have some fun because we've had some of your teammates on Confidential, and, and some of their uh, answers have been surprising. I, I'm really interesting to know who your favorite uh, player was growing up. Uh, man, I <laughs> my dad. I never we never really watched too much hockey to be honest. Uh, not a whole heck of a lot. We had, we had a guy from my hometown named Sean Van Allen who played on the Ottawa Senators. So to, uh, him and my his brother and my dad were best friends. Uh, so we always watched them, but my dad loved Paul Correa. So he kind of convinced me Paul Correa when I was younger, but then as I started playing and my dad was a goalie, so he didn't really know much about the, the rough stuff. Um, but as soon as I started playing, I, I was kind of a rough around the edges guy. I started to really like Darcy Tucker. Yeah, Darcy Tucker. I was thinking maybe you might go Wendell Clarkway as well. I remember Sean Van Allen seeing him play in the American Hockey League when I was going to to St. John's uh, Maple Leafs games and stuff like that over the years growing up in Newfoundland. So I remember Sean Van Allen uh, well. So you you like Darcy Tucker as you got to be a little bit older. What was your favorite team growing up? Yeah, like I said, we never really never really had one. Everyone expects it to be a Canadian team. Calgary is the closest team, but I think as soon as I got to like my teenage years, I think Boston was always just, you know, they always played well in the playoffs and they always had a rough team and, you know, they always had a chance to win. So I started kind of following the Bruins a lot. Just, they were always in playoffs. They played hard. And, and ever since then, I just kind of tell people that that's my team, even though I could really care less who wins. You mentioned your dad there. A lot of your teammates, a lot of the clan guys have been on here to talk about the, the biggest influence in their career. It usually comes down to family or maybe a coach when they were a young guy. What was, what's been the biggest influence on your career? Yeah, both my parents have been, been awesome. My, my dad was a, he was a goalie, like I said, but he, he actually, I think there was one year where he was third in the league in penalty minutes as a goalie. So 
he's always been, you know, he's taught me a lot. Just, I think, uh, the best thing he's ever taught me was if you're, you know, you got to find a way to contribute to uh, in any sport. I, I play a lot of sports away from hockey. It's just like, you got to find a way to contribute. If you're not doing, if you're not scoring fight, if you're not fighting score or block shots, something like that. So he's always taught me a lot. And then my, my grandpa has been really huge. Uh, my dad's dad, just, just a hardworking guy works so hard all the time. So just kind of try to work hard every game. And, and it's because of those guys. I got to meet your parents around Christmas and they followed uh, the club around a little bit. They had some fun in Belfast. I could tell right away meeting with your dad that he uh, he's so proud of you, but also he he certainly, I could tell he was one of those guys, hardworking guy, and he'd be saying to you exactly that. If you're not going to score, you better be blocking shots. So interesting that you say that. You are one of the hardest working guys in the league and, and certainly coming back from injury and coming back early from injury. What's the kind of the, the routine and the pregame meal to get you ready for uh, for action in purple? Yeah, it's been changing throughout the year. Uh, it's whatever doesn't make my stomach feel like crap. Now, the older you get, um, I, I kind of got this. I actually go to MS and they got these little mushroom sauce packets. So I just do chicken and pasta and instead of putting like, you know, white cream sauce or red pasta. I put this mushroom sauce and, you know, I, it's kind of, well, I wouldn't say it's working. I don't have, I'm not Gary Hayden lighting up the league, but it makes me feel better anyway. Um, so yeah, just a classic pasta and chicken, but instead of pasta sauce, mushroom sauce. What's uh, the favorite music? Because, again, this has been interesting to me, some of the responses. I know that uh, your good buddy Cody Soul loves a bit of country music on a non-game day, but what's on the uh, the Spotify list for the captain? Yeah, just pretty much country. Uh, although I that movie, Mo the Dirt movie by Motley Crue, I've watched it about six times, and I just watched it again <laughs> the other night. So, um and that that kind of gets me fired up a little bit, but I always I always end up going back to country, and I could listen to country before the games too. It's better than the crap that most guys listen to. So, well, that's uh, we'll we'll veer off course. So, is it is it like as a captain, as a guy who's been around, you've played in the American Hockey League, and I'm not saying you're old, but as maybe a veteran player, do you sometimes look around the room and you see Reese Kelly and some of the younger guys, and they want? Is there a division in the room as to what gets put on the on the stereo? Yeah, there usually is. Uh, I think Solzy gets it in the mornings on game or on non-game days, so it's mostly country. And then Lacko and Cowns do a lot of the game day stuff. And and to be fair, it's actually been pretty good. I've seen it on teams a lot worse where guys are screaming at each other and trying to get something different on. But we got a pretty good group uh, guys, so if no one really gets takes it too serious. But uh, I forget what they call it here. It's like. The British music, like r and I don't know what it is, R&B or something, and it kind of grinds my gears a bit, but I, I don't say much. I let them, <laughs> let them have their moment. Let them have their music. Yeah, you, you mentioned you watched the Motley Crue movie six times. I was going to ask you what your favorite movie is. Is that the favorite movie, or is there there's something you like to watch, like on Netflix or whatever, to, to kind of relax? No, my favorite movie, and I'm, I'm guessing 80% of people won't know what it is. It's called Eight Seconds. It's a it's a bull riding movie with uh, Lane Frost and uh, well, I can't really tell you what happens in it, but uh, great movie and it's always been my favorite since uh, I was a young kid and uh, obviously love bull riding. I've been on a couple little steers that I, I don't really buck, but never got to go on a bull. I'm, it's kind of on my bucket list here. I got a buddy back home that raises bucking bulls. Uh, his name's Tanner Allman, and we always kind of joke around, but. I try and I, I really want to ride one, but I uh, it's always in the summertime, right when I'm in training and uh, trying to go back for hockey. And last thing I need is a broken neck, so I might have to wait that one out till I'm I'm done my season or done. Uh, I never I never tell you what to do, but let's hold mm -hmm. off on that until you're maybe uh, well done with uh, playing. <laughs> As cool as it would be to see you on a bucking Bronco. What's your favorite city, whether it's somewhere you've got to go play in the American Hockey League or the coast or even over on this side of the pond, or is it a, a place you've visited with family or friends? What's your favorite city? Uh, I have to go back to Allen. I've put Allen, Texas. I've played in so many different places uh, and always want to go back to Allen. Uh, you know, we, we just got treated so good there. It's right beside Dallas, Texas, so – you know, and, and when you think of Texas, it's kind of like a, a farming, uh, you know, ranch, stuff like that. And that's what I'm used to. And then obviously you get heat pretty much all year round and you're sitting by a pool and stuff like that. So I think I played there for, uh, I don't know what, it must have been four or five years in total. And 
you know, we've always had really good places with, you know, we're sitting around a pool after practice and stuff like that. So it's, it's hard to beat that. Who's the toughest guy? I mean, look, the, the, the Purple Army loves the brand of hockey you play, and certainly there's nine other teams that when you're in the building, they're well aware of what you can bring to the table. Who's the toughest guy you've ever faced and maybe the toughest guy you've ever played with, or is it two different two different guys? Yeah, there's a couple There's a couple different guys. Everyone knows, uh, well, Doty, Jake Doty played in the league here a little bit, and uh, we fought twice. We're, we're pretty good buddies, but we fought twice, and then – Everyone, know, just guys that people know around here, Gang Young, man, he doesn't lose many fights, and and we fought twice too, and he split my head open. The uh, the, the second time, he really he just doesn't lose many fights, and he's super tough. But there are some guys in the American League that I probably shouldn't have been messing around with. Uh, ben Harper played in the NHL. I think he's six seven, six eight, and just guys that kind of had to fight, and just because they were the other team's tough guy or whatever, but. And then the guy that uh, his name's PC Labrie he played a little bit in the NHL, and I played with him in Wichita. And man, I could throw both both hands really good, and didn't lose many fights. I don't. He was getting older, so didn't really want to fight anymore. But he's one of the tougher guys too. It's interesting too. There, you mentioned you're good buddies with Doty, and I think you and I have talked off camera. Like you talk, you've said like I fought most of my best friends. Isn't it interesting? The guys that kind of. You, like you said, your dad said, well, you're not scoring, you better fight or you better contribute. But guys that contribute that part of the game, they always seem to usually get along off the ice and there's a there's a kind of honor amongst that group. Yeah, it always kind of happens. Uh, you know, you don't like each other on the ice. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys still like each other on the ice. They just know their jobs. But uh, I, w- I would never, I've never really went into a game and fought one of my buddies because I just had to because that was my role. It's always us getting into it because of a hit or chirping each other. So, but I think I had, I think I fought, you know, 12 or 10 of my really good buddies and that's more fights than a lot of people have, but uh, yeah, no, everyone, everyone seems to, you know, like each other. You got to have a lot of respect for guys that even just drop their gloves, even if they're not good at it, there's always a chance to get hurt and obviously with the brain stuff like that. So a lot of respect uh, all the time when you, when a guy drops the gloves. Well, absolutely. And whether it's coaches or the Purple Army, everyone respects that. But one thing is for certain, you've had a good season offensively as well, including a big goal coming off a big goal on Friday, 21 seconds in. So that that part of the game has changed. I mean, you're a very good player. You've got a good shot. You've got great hockey IQ. Guys that fill that role have to be able to step up. And you've played up the lineup this season as well with all the injuries and stuff. So you have to be able to grab those opportunities to contribute in other ways. Yeah, Morgie's he's done everything he can to you know help me and will help the team. Uh, you know he's helped me get points and I've been on the power play. I, I'm not a I'm not a power play guy where I'm on the half wall and I got a good shot. I'm just trying to work and get the guys the puck and and go to the front of that, clean up some rebounds and stuff. But he's given me opportunity to do that, and I don't think I'm having a spectacular year. I think I should be over half a point per game, a little more than that. That's my expectations, but. Uh, you know, like I said, I've been getting chances and I kind of worry about defensive zone. Obviously, it doesn't my plus minus would say otherwise, but defensive zone blocking shots, sticking up for my teammates and, and finding ways to win defensively and then just working hard. I always say to the guys, if you just work hard and you're struggling to get points, they'll come with hard work. And and I feel when I get my points, it's just me trying to work hard and, you know, going to the good areas and, and doing what it takes to win hockey games and points are a bonus. You talked about teammates that are sticking up for teammates and all that, and, and you mentioned earlier, and a couple of your teammates have mentioned earlier about how it's it's a good room, it's a close group, and all that. Who's the funniest guy in the room? Who's the guy that has the one-liner or the quip to kind of bring things back down and not let things get too high or too low? Uh, I'd have to say it. I'd have to say Solzy. We're obviously really close, but he's always he's always in a good mood. Uh, while it's, there's a couple times he has been in a good mood in the mornings and you can definitely tell you want to stay away from him when he's in a bad mood because even if you're his best friend, he'll, let, he'll, uh, he's not afraid to yell at you. So, but he's always, he always come to the rink happy at, I don't know what he is, 32 or 33 now coming to the rink happy every day, making jokes. And, uh, you know, he keeps it pretty light in the room, but he also doesn't let anything slide either. So there's some other guys too, but they're, they're kind of quiet. They stay under the radar and then they say a couple things, but, for the most part, it's Solzy that's always keeping it lightly. Yeah, that's that's come up a few times. Uh, 
You know what? It's it's interesting because he is he is a leader. He's a big presence, and like we talked about the music and all that, he tries to contribute something. And I've heard him say he's actually said to me off the ice, like you can't cheat the game. Like some of the things that you have to do that hurt. You mentioned blocking shots. He leads by example. I think he's done a really good job uh, taking Reese Kelly under the under the arm this season, hasn't he? Yeah, it's it's been really good. It's actually kind of fun to watch. Uh, you know, he's when you get to that age, you want to do you want to do more than just you know, worry about yourself. And, and I think he does a really good job of that. And I think it's really helped Reese. He's, he's definitely, you can just tell in his game that he's, he's got a lot more confidence. I still think he could use a little more confidence, but you know, when you're young, it's, it's not that easy. You don't want to make mistakes and stuff like that, but Solzy's taught him a lot of things, I think from, from just watching him and, and, but most of all is just letting Reese know that he can play and, and not to worry and you're going to make mistakes. It's just how you make them. And, and what you do after you make them. And, and I think it's been really good for the team and really good for Reese. And, you know, it's, they've been our uh, statistically uh, defensively, they've been our best uh, D pairing. So, so it must be working. You, we, you and I talked this off season uh, to kind of, let's see if you're going to come back. We wanted you back. I, I called you on behalf of the owner and all that sort of stuff. And one of the times I called you, you were, you were taking care of the cattle. And so I kind of know the answer to this question perhaps, but if, if not a professional hockey player at this stage, what would the, the career be if, if it wasn't on the land or whatever, is there something else? Yeah, I'm on the fence about that actually right now, but uh, my grand, my grandparents and my uncle, uh, well, me and my grandpa run our cows together, but my uncle's right on the farm there with them. So, and he's got 700 or 800 head at, at points in the, some points in the year. So a lot of farming, it's a lot of busy, you know, with the cows. My grandpa does a great job for me. He basically does everything until I get home and then we get to work together all summer. So it's kind of a, you know, I get to see my grandparents every day in the summer. So it's kind of nice. And then, uh, my dad and my grandpa do the, you know, the actual farmland, uh, you know, we got wheat barley peas lentils four thousand acres or 3500 to four thousand acres depending on how much we rent so we're always busy doing that i wouldn't say it's the funnest thing after you know you go eight months with 23 guys in the locker room hanging out every day to sitting in a tractor by yourself for 12 hours it uh it definitely uh gets a little depressing sometimes so that's where i'm kind of on the fence here getting 30 years old if i want to do something else i've talked to mitch jones about the firefighting thing little interested in that just because I like to be around guys and you know it's kind of a team team thing so I don't know it's it's I don't know what I'd like to be doing uh bullfighting is pretty cool too but I, I think I'm past my prime on that but there'll be the farm the farm will always be there and then I'll have to figure it out here soon well, let's hope there's many more years with a C on your chest and purple as well, Dyson. Let's not discount that. And certainly you mentioned it off the top there. It, it is positive. And you said maybe people wouldn't believe you, but the room is positive and the guys believe that we can move up the standings, move up out of eighth place and get into a position, a much better position heading in the playoffs and perhaps play our best hockey. Because let's be honest, and we're not using it as an excuse, but to have competition for spots now with the likes of, I mean, Sanch is back in. We're hoping that Combs will be back in soon. And to actually have competition on the back end as well. And as well up front uh, is really important in those in those last games as we try and get to the best position possible heading into the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. And I, I got the, my wife does a good job putting the schedule up back there, and it's it's all teams that you know when we started the year that teams that we we need to beat, and those those teams are coming up. But like you said, the healthy competition, and I know we've been talking about the injuries all year and stuff like that, but. We haven't had a line stay the same or a power play unit stay the same, a penalty kill stay the same for more than three games, two, three games in a row this year. So we're getting to that point where where guys are going to have to battle through. Obviously, our injuries have been crazy, breaks and stuff like that, but guys are going to have to battle through injuries because we need wins. And so we're hoping that, you know, in the end of the year here, there's, there's nothing switching up in the lineup. We have our full lineup, and then it's just a battle in between the players and – and who's going to play the best keeps playing. And if you're not playing well, you're you're going to be watching from the stand. So I think uh, we're excited and uh, we, we know we need to do better. And I hope people understand that uh, we're not happy with the position we're in. It sucks and it sucks disappointing people and disappointing yourself. But, uh, you know, we pick up three out of four points against Coventry, a team who, team who we're going to try and catch here coming down the stretch. And uh and now we're uh, we got Guilford, a team that knocked us out of, you know, the Challenge Cup. So we we got a little bit, uh, you know, a little anger towards them. So 
we need to get on a roll here and it needs to start soon. Well, Dyson, there's a lot more positives than negatives right now, and that's the important thing. We're heading into the most important part of the season, and certainly it sounds like the room is ready, the captain is ready. So thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, join us today on Confidential, and uh, we'll see you at Brayhead Arena soon. Yeah, it sounds good, Murph. Thanks for having me on.